three, episode two of Two Shiny Domes coming at you from our beautiful Midtown Studios in Sacramento, California. I'm Shiny Dome number one, Mark Torgerson. I'm here at my esteemed and smartly dressed colleague, Shiny Dome number two, Ronald Benjamin. Ron, good afternoon. What's up, brother? How are you? Excited to be back on set here, talking about an exciting opening two weekends. We had an amazing 2,200 games played in the Fall League, 650 played in the Regional Leagues, and 270 played in the NPL over the course of two weekends. That adds up to a lot of football. We're here to talk about it all. Absolutely. That's great. What's opening, the, opening weekend's always fun. When you start, uh, teams start to try to move their way through the uh, the divisions and the standings, and the first couple weeks are always exciting for me. I like those. It's good to kind of set. I think you get an idea maybe after week three of where everybody's going to stand um, in the MPL as teams fight the relegation and in the MPL 1 and MPL 2, the promotion. we got an exciting show coming up. We have Mr. Greg Rumendahl, the DOC of what is now called El Grove Soccer. It used to be FC El Grove. It used to be El Grove United. It used to be Everton. El Grove Everton. It used to be El Grove uh, Rec Soccer. I don't know what else. Whatever I happened to Wee Ball? Oh, yeah. Wee Ball. Remember, it was Raymond, Raymond's a Folsom now. Yeah. The Wee Ball, the neon uniform. They just yeah. get, they get one neon uniform that never changed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, we need a little welcome back for our uh, our very own Evan Ream. Evan Ream is back after a little, uh, he had the sniffles and a uh, sore throat, so he missed the two months of that. You know, good, good to see the, the youth of the day is hardworking and puts aside a little bit of sniffles to come, uh, come into work. I was shocked that he still had a job, to be honest with you. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> All right, where are we at here? Let's get right into it. We are going to go with our boys' match of the week. It was Cal Odyssey traveling to La Mirinda in, in a very exciting match. You can see here La Mirinda open the scoring. Guzman, Adrian Guzman, slotting left-footed past the goalkeeper for the 1-0 lead as Cal Odyssey, both of these two teams' favorites for this division in the U-17s. That was early in the fifth minute. La Mirinda would actually move on and get the second goal. We watch the replay here. They're missing the second goal right here. This is Mazi Wyatt. Looked like the defender peeling for handball, didn't hit his hand. Mozzie Wyatt sliding finish, left footed past the goalkeeper. La Mirinda looked like the cruising at this point, 2 0 at home on the hot turf. But Cal Odyssey was not to be denied. So nice little move here, just fighting through everything and then a the little flexion of Mozzie sliding in for the 2 0 lead. You still got to defend that while you're having your hand up, right? He may, he may want to <laughs> beat on the in line a little bit there. But an own goal, cross. La Mirinda helps him out. Cal Odyssey back in the game at 2-1. Good service in. Just uh, just a tough one to defend there as it slipped past the goalkeeper. We'll move on to the 89th minute here. 93rd minute. Three minutes of injury time. What a header. Nathan Shimato for Cal Odyssey. Look at the celebration too. I guarantee when we watch your drill highlights, you're not going to see the celebration. No, no. That's no. passion right there. All the way from Fresno, all the way to La Marinda. Third minute of injury time. Pops up with the glider. Two teams, top of the group, two favorites, La Marinda 2, Cal Odyssey 2, and that's our U17 boys match of the week. Now there's our standings, we'll go over the standings here real quick. Star Academy, you have to play a game. Cal Odyssey, top of the table right now, four points, that one draw, they got a win, La Marinda with four, Santa Clara Sporting, and Force also with three. All right, on the girls' side of things, we've got... Uh, Call that dead air. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, an early, late August matchup, but it was the first uh, first game of the season. Uh, I was actually the PSB game. Union hosting MVLA. Uh, 04 Barcelona, just an amazing team. Barcelona's in white. Uh, very good patience. Uh, stretching the field out very nicely, being patient. Ball into the front runners, little combination play, switch the point. I like this highlight where it's passing. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. The goal is in the middle of the field, down the field. There we go. Getting down to the end line, collected by the goalkeeper. PSV is in black, NBLA is in white, trying to keep possession and play out of the back. They had a really, really hard time breaking down NBLA in this game. 
nice one and two touch combination. I believe this is the finish, gets in behind. That was the first goal scored by Leah O'Brien in the 45th minute. Uh, PSV on their t on their uh, heels again. A little shot from distance. Uh, How'd that go? Yeah, good shit. But that was by Madeline Cunningham, and the final result was five to one in favor of MBLA. They're at top of the group right now, three and zero. Thirteen goals, four four against. Followed by uh, CCSA and Mustang with six points, and then uh, Mustang ECNL and MBLA Barcelona White uh, with four points apiece followed by Murn FC and PSV Union, and SF Elite. It's a younger team, we're in the 03s, right? Yes. We're in the 03s. They look like a 14, we have actually watched that game. They're an amazing, uh, they're an amazing group. Why were you there? We played after. <laughs> you travel all the way down? Did you see golf? I did. Okay, I good. Did. saw golf. Look at this. Uh, all right. Now this, this is a classic. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you do it, because this, this is a classic. <laughs> For those of you who know Kevin Goff, he does a great job with our video. Uh, he knows pretty much nothing about soccer and for some reason never watches the games, i.e. on this video here. Here we go. Away from home, you were down 1-0 early. How do you feel you performed and played after that uh, score against you guys? Um, I th we scored first. I think we scored first. I, th I like this. I uh, uh, excuse me. Yeah, we scored first. Were you watching the game? <laughs> She looked baffled by the yeah, question. Yeah, she, she was, was definitely not, baffled by the question. She was such a pro, though. Like she, she handled it. She did. She yeah. did well. That was awesome. She did well. All, All right. right. So, the highlight show will be right back in one minute with our very own shiny, half shiny dome. He's got a little hair. Half shiny dome. DOC of Ilgro Soccer, Mr. Greg Rumadal. <laughs> We have our first special guest appearance here on Two Shiny Domes, Mr. Greg Rumendahl, who is VOC of Elk Grove Soccer, FC Elk Grove, or whatever the heck it's called now. I've noticed this, uh, you've got the exact same badge with the new logo on it. Welcome to the show. Thank Greg, you. good to see you. Good to see you. Get you all started. Tell us how things are going over at uh, uh, Elk Grove Soccer United. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, things are going well. Um, obviously... Uh, going through the beginning of the fall season, so we have uh, our grassroots program kicks off. So uh, expanding from you know just your regular uh, field base to now you know 40 fields that you have kicking off, and every kid you know wearing Elk Grove badges around town. So it's a it's a pretty good time. Um, you know a lot of lot of work that has to be done in the August and September time. Uh, to get ready, not just for the NorCal leagues and NPL and things like that, just your regular grassroots type of uh, environment as well. So you have the kids wear their jerseys around town to kind of promote your own club. Uh, at, well, all, guys... <coughs> all the well, all the all the programs have the same jersey, so um, it's something that we we changed a couple of years ago, where different parts of the city had different jerseys, and now everybody's all the same jersey uh, no, across town, and it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty fast. Do you guys go around to see us and jog around the track and? Blackhawks and that iteration. <laughs> no, no, we don't do that. I mean, it's a, I mean, I, I think it's the one club, and this is, you know, kind of looking at it is, it's a city club. It's a, it's huge. It goes from your top soccer, you know, kids with special needs, all the way up to the development academy and NPL. So, you know, it's a full service type of program that we try to put together. Yeah. So. Yeah, my, but my, uh, how many, uh, how many kids total do you have in the program? Uh, I would say around six thousand. Wow. But I mean, El Elk Grove is a massive, growing population. It's you know, there's 44 elementary schools in the in the unified school district. So it's and it's continuously expanding up to maybe 250,000 in the population in the next two years. So ten, ten years. So, so I mean, it's it's Elk Grove census report though. Right? <laughs> so six thousand players are in Elk Grove soccer. Your setup. Yeah. How many? Do you know how many? Uh, total number of players in Elk Grove throughout all of the clubs, if you had to take a guess? I would say it'd be close to, you know, around you know, seven and a half, eight thousand. It's wow. a, lot, a lot of kids playing. So, and it, and it, it's, I mean, it's a growing sport, right? So, you know, when you have these, you know, emerging type of programs, you know, it's a really diverse population. It's got, you know, every type of nationality and ethnicity yeah. that you could have. Yeah. So, you know, you know, within some of our teams, it's 11 players with 10 different 
you know, national backgrounds. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's really diverse, and it's one of the things that drew me to the area initially. Um, you know, when I first came here about four or five years ago. Wasn't the money that drew you at all? It was the kids. It was the kids. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> None of us are getting paid too much, you know. Yeah, it's teaching. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Anything new or special going on this year at the club? Um. Well, we, you know, and besides uh, the name change, yeah. <laughs> well, we we've done a, a lot of uh, um, things along with uh, you know, especially technology. So integrating that within all of our coach education and player education platforms, and it's been challenging to get out the right information in the right way to the right people. So, you know, how do you talk to players? How do you get information out to parents? And, you know, how do you disseminate it to your coaches, especially when we have like 350 coaches when you look at it across the board. So, and I'm in charge of every one of them who's 13 and above. So we have... At all levels. At all levels. levels. All levels. Wow. So, you know, so how, so we do a lot of coach educational and, and stuff integrating technology so we've used a lot of the the technological services and, and um, so like we use huddle through the DA and expanding our platform there and starting to do webinars and using like the Google Plus hangout to kind of create dialogue within the club at all levels where people feel free that they can ask questions and then you know and then you couple that with like a your marketing side where you're doing you know, goals and saves of the week for you know for kids and you know, grandma can go see it in Cincinnati or wherever. Uh, you know, I think it's it's good to kind of grow your your uh, your brand, your population, and just the culture as it goes. That's great. You guys actually ever play soccer when you're out there? Or is it just uh, all on the what about these video games now? Uh, well, well, we're uh, we're like sixty hours a week, so I mean, we we do, we do pretty well. But we we coach from uh, four p.m. to ten p.m. and then the other six hours we're in the office, so. What about when you guys are recruiting everybody else's players? Uh, we don't do that. Very good. Good answer. You don't listen to half the things that come out of his mouth, right? You should never. I'm here to ask the questions. I'm here to ask the questions. Um, so what are your what are your thoughts on the state of youth soccer right now with all the different things going on with uh, NorCal, NPL, DA, ECNL, pre this, post that, all that type of stuff? PEL, APO, EPO. Well, I mean... <laughs> I think you have, in the last three years, you have three significant changes. You have the birth year change, trial window change, and then your formatting changes. And those three things really affected the stability of how clubs operated. So whereas they operated on a grade level for the most part, now it's annual, which is easier for the recruiting side or the scouting side on the national team level, but it threw a lot of parents in a state of flux. So... How that's going to, hopefully, with getting the 2026 World Cup, it stabilizes and equalizes pretty quickly. But until you have a relegation promotion tiered system that filters from kids who are 6'7 all the way up to you know full pro, it's just not possible. And Sacramento is a perfect example. It's, you know, it's, it's got a glass ceiling. It has a semi-pro team, but not a pro team. Um, you know, there's, and then there's this massive emerging UPSL league which, you know, teams are coming in and then leaving a year later because right. there's no infrastructure stability. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a money game. You know, everybody can, is trying to figure out how they can create a, a stranglehold on some part of the market. Um, but, it, you know, I think ultimately, you know, I hold us all accountable. If we're not in a quarterfinal, semifinal in 2026 hosting it, then I think we as coaches have failed because we have plenty of time to prepare, and we definitely have the talent and the, the infrastructure to be able to do it. So you've heard it here first: failure, if not the quarterfinals in twenty twenty six. And Mister, we heard it right here. Yeah, I like it though. I like the optimism, and we, you know what, we should be holding ourselves to to those type of standards. I'm assuming we qualify. Do we have to qualify for that? Or not? <laughs> <laughs> Automatic auto bid. We get yeah. auto, we get an auto bid on that, Evan? Not determined yet. It hasn't been determined yet, right? Are they going to? Because Canada shouldn't get one. They're terrible. <laughs> How terrible, no, would that, how terrible would that be if we didn't qualify, didn't for, qualify for our own World Cup? Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Sorry. Stranger things about you. Yeah, we just had the uh, incident of not qualifying for the last World Cup. Uh, let me ask you one more thing. Um, so what? what is the, what and who are kind of the admin for 
the club now? Because I know there's been some uh, some changes with uh, some leadership there. Yeah, so I mean, we, we have, uh, you know, we have our office staff. So we have three full-time office staff, um, you know, CEO, and then boys, girls, director, youth director. And who's the social media. Uh, so, so who's the head? Yes, uh, Andrew Donnery okay. would be the CEO. Um, the CEO. Ben Ormsby uh, would be the girls director on the opposite side of me being the boys director. And then Dan James is the youth director um, that filters all the way down. Uh, and then we have, a, you know, goalkeeper director, Lucas Almeida, and social media director, and fields coordinators and all that type of stuff. So, but uh, yeah, it's okay. a, I mean, we're, we're in the office five days a week, six hours a day. What happened to office. Smith? Where'd he go? Uh, he got the head coaching job at Fresno. Is Donnery not down there doing something too? Uh, he, he was coaching the 23 team, the PDL, PDL team, team. Uh, which is just that part-time summer, early summer team. But yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a full-time production. Yeah. So it's, you, know, you should see our warehouse. It's yeah. a little bit bigger than this office. All right, you get a chance to tell us the deep meaning of the Oak Grove soccer name change. Because right now, you sound like a Facebook page. I said, you don't sound like a soccer club, it sounds like a Facebook page. I noticed you kept the same badge. What happened to FC Oak Grove? It used to be Oak Grove, and now it used to be SC Oak Grove. It used to be Everton. Everton you Oak know what? The history. Yeah, it's, see, I don't know now much about the soccer. history. I mean, from when I came in, uh, it was the addition and conglomeration of all the different clubs and being under one logo and one banner. So looking at it from top to bottom, you know, our, our development academy team all the way down to, you know, the four-year-olds that started. So it's just a way to make everybody not just fractionalize the club into, you know, different set programs and some, you know, special feelings, if you will, because you're in a unique program. Everybody belongs to the same thing. And they're just at different levels and different stages of their soccer education and their experience. So I kinda yeah. know that answer. That was pretty good. Yeah. He brought yeah. it down for us. <laughs> yeah. Give, give Ruben all credit. Yeah. We'll wrap it up, get you out of here. I know you gotta get to the office hours. All right. All right. You got your six hours in today. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll appreciate it. having you. All right, no problem. We'll right back on two shiny domes. Thank you. This is Torg's Rant, and I want to talk to you all out there about cheating and about referee abuse and about taking things too far out of the field. 3,000 games played at NorCal this weekend. You go on the pad list, and you see everything that you can imagine. Everyone. There is a game to be played next week. You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. Behave yourself. Pack your bags up and go home, despite what you think of the referee. And that brings me to even the referees. What about those guys out there? They have a player pass. It's not really the kid. It's a different birth certificate. Is that what it means too much to win a NorCal event? I'm sure they appreciate that you love your event. But people, you cannot use an 03 in an 06 game. That's called cheating. We don't want to see it. And if you get caught, I'm going to recommend NorCal boot you over to two, play in the Nevada League. Oh, wait, they play in our league. Or CYSA. Or CYSA. Or CYSA. Don't do that. If you have a bad referee call, go, mm, bite your tongue, walk off, and fight again the next day. Did you guys watch the World Cup final? I remember a VAR incident that they didn't review, and that France scored the first goal on a goal that should never been allowed. These things happen in soccer. Deal with it. Move on. Don't be a cheater. That's all on torture. Right. And welcome back to our NorCal studios. We're here. With our final segment, our second and final segment after our mailbags question, our lightning round, we have our esteemed producer who actually started the show today, Evan Reem, is going to fire some questions at us, and we have 30 seconds to answer them. Evan, get us started this lightning round. All right, so we all know that our U.S. men's national team can't qualify for the World Cup, but what about the, a NorCal men's national team selection? A NorCal, I think this kind of brought up because the PDB team took essentially a NorCal uh, team to Gothia Cup. So if we were to take the best players in Northern California, Sebastian Legette, David Bingham, Jonathan Gonzalez, who obviously plays for Mexico now, Tommy Thompson, Julian Bob, and name a few. Could they qualify for the World Cup? I would say yes, they could. The population of Northern California, I think, would have been the 20th largest uh, to play at the World Cup in Russia. So there's certainly smaller countries that can do it. So why not? We would have to beat Trinidad, Honduras, piece of cake, get a couple draws with Mexico, and then we'd have to beat the rest of the United States, which I think town here, we could do easily. I like it. I like it. I think so, too. We've got a lot of solid players uh, in this area. It would be very interesting to see. I wish that could actually happen. 
but I think we could definitely uh, beat some of the uh, these smaller nations. Um, but then we'd be in a lot of trouble. I'll tell you one nice thing: is you would get all the qualifying games in Northern California to go watch every single one. That'd, <laughs> That'd be, be nice, solid. Right? Yeah. That would be solid. All right, question two. So on the girls' side, who would win and how close would it be in a hypothetical playoff between the NorCal NPL winner, NorCal State Cup winner, USDA Northern uh, California top side, and the top ECNL side? Wow, that's a great question there, isn't it? That's a tough one. That's a great question. Um, I think all of the levels are really super solid. I would actually really like to see something like that in the future where they bring those champions together at the end and, and have a little playoff. Why not? I think well, it'd be... Very, very exciting. We actually, we actually do That's have right. something. It's called the NorCal State Cup, but the DA teams don't enter it. And half of the ECNL teams don't yeah. enter it. So if we all enter the NorCal State Cup, we'd have something similar. So why don't you bring that up with your DA people who don't allow you to play? I am saying I think it would be very, very cool to have the MPL champion ECNL, the winner of the DA, play off at the end. Not in a, It doesn't have to be a cup situation, just a playoff at the end of the season. It's a playoff is not a cup, but... Essentially the same thing? No. No? No. I'm not sure we have an answer to that one. All right, so uh, <laughs> La Liga just announced that they're going to attempt to begin playing regular season games in the United States. I believe the first one's going to be in Miami featuring Barcelona. Uh, what would you guys think about La Liga playing one game um, in Northern California? Well, uh, I think it comes down to who would be playing. I think this is a big question, right? Would you go watch uh, Girona versus Levante in San Francisco? I'm guessing you would definitely watch Barcelona Real Madrid, but I'm assuming they're not going to bring that game over there. So how much interest would a lower-level Spanish league game, how far would you travel to go see that game? I would probably say... Would you watch it if it was in Sacramento? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'm assuming the only place in Northern California to play that they would consider playing would be Levi's. Uh, would I go to San Jose to watch that game? I'm not quite sure, depending on who it is. So interesting that they brought that game over here, though. Yeah, if it was a if it was a lower level of game, I wouldn't travel that far to go watch the game. But definitely, if you know Barcelona's One playing, of the big games are playing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Girona is playing Barcelona, in Miami. Girona is owned by the same people that own New York City FC. So there's a little bit of connection over there, um, some American All right. connections. All right, see um, how that goes. <laughs> so and this is probably the best question. I we say the best for last. Uh, who is the worst dress coach on the sideline in all of Nor like NorCal? The worst dress. Well, I think the worst dress is easy. That's got to go to Mr. Fitzpatrick with his Tiger shirts. <laughs> it's the uh, Tiger's baseball shirt on. <laughs> Best dress, though. One time, I'll tell you a story, Ron. One time I wore uh, uh, khakis and uh, some nice shoes, and I was feeling really good. And then the goalkeeper comes over and says, hey, coach, warm me up. I said, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> And then literally, like, three minutes later, the ref goes, hey, uh, coach, the net's got to be fixed over here. <laughs> I'm up there, my that's, classic. that's like Anson Doran's dressing up for every game. You know, he's got the tie on and all that. Um, I just got to look, uh, revert back to the State Cup when it was 192 degrees outside and uh, and Tony Sutton had his uh, black sweatpants on and his black top long sleeve. <laughs> and uh, people are literally walking around in just shorts and tank tops and Tony rolls Jeff up. Jeff Jenkins had a park on one time. That, 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 <laughs> that was pretty good. So we're going to have a challenge. Send us your pictures of your best dressed coach. We want to see some blazers, some nice, some khakis, maybe a nice polo, and you can win a two signed two shiny domes shirt. Doesn't that make you the worst dress coach then if you had the two shiny domes shirt? No. Uh, no, I think Tigers baseball still trumps okay. that. <laughs> Fitzy, don't wear that baseball hat ever again. Get us on the mailbag, Evan. Uh, sure, all right. Um, so we got some mailbag questions. Um, as always, you can send in your questions to two shiny jones at gmail.com if you would like to have um, your questions read on this show. So <laughs> Eric Farfan says, forget these two shiny dome clowns who are my very good friends, by the way. This is the way I see it, and he's posted some um, rankings that are different from you guys' rankings. What are your thoughts? Well, it looks like he posted the got soccer rankings, right? <laughs> which, um, which don't hold any value anymore. Yeah, because the two shiny dome ranking has taken over, so I'm not sure what Farfan is talking about. And uh, by the way, Farfan, uh, our rankings are U19, that includes U18s. So you've divided that up, so you've basically half of what you had. You didn't put that into context. And most importantly, uh, Ron, his team's not very good. He just thinks they're a lot better than they really are. Which doesn't carry weight on two shiny domes rankings. That's correct. It's not part of the criteria. Yeah. So far, fan, try winning some games. Remember, uh, NPL games are in and a tie. And put the <laughs> U18 teams in your ranking to get a true ranking. Because that ranking isn't any good. 
Reminder that ranking special comes out this Friday. Tune in to Two Shiny Domes on Friday to see the updated rankings from the first two weekends of the NPL. Our next live show goes October 15th. And any questions, comments, send them to two shiny domes at gmail.com. And a reminder, anything you email can say and will be used against you on this show. Two shiny domes. That's it for Midtown Studios. We'll see you Fridays with the ranking show.